The UK is on the cusp of the biggest change to mobile 900 MHz spectrum use in decades with the providers Vodafone and O2 trading bits of their allocation in the band to produce much larger, more contiguous chunks of spectrum which is much more advantageous for deploying 4G and later 5G services onto the band. So starting off going back decades, Vodafone and O2, although it wasn't called O2 back then, acquired three non-contiguous blocks of spectrum in each of the uplink and downlink directions. This was used for 2G services at the time, which was not an issue because 2G channels can be distributed amongst discontinuous blocks of spectrum without really any trouble at all. Then going forward, Vodafone O2 started to deploy 3G on the 900 MHz band to increase the coverage and capacity of their 3G layer, which up to that point was in use only on the 2100 MHz band with the obvious especially range limitations that provided. Vodafone O2 launched their 3G on the 900 MHz by refarming their respective first blocks of spectrum to produce the carriers in Vodafone's case UARFCN2938 and in O2's 2963. Fast forward then to 2016 and the providers are wanting to deploy more 4G capacity by refarming spectrum from 3G use on 2100 MHz to 4G use. And while 3G load has gone down, obviously losing the two or three 3G carries on 2100 MHz with no remediation for that would have been a problem. So what the providers did is then introduce second 3G carriers each into their respective spectrum by refarming again. So in their respective second blocks of spectrum in the 900 MHz band, Vodafone O2 launched their second 3G carriers, Vodafone using UARFCN 2987 and O2 Then last year, so mid-2018, Vodafone started to deploy 4G on the 900 MHz band alongside their two existing 3G carriers. So this 4G carrier exists in their third chunks of the 900 MHz band alongside 2G slotted right at the end of that of those third segments. EARFCN 3698 is used and the 3G carriers UARFCN 2938 and 2987 remain as well. This does only leave a tiny chunk of spectrum for 2G but still enough to run what they needed. Now clearly these other 3G blocks could be refarmed to 4G, however that would leave Vodafone and later O2 when they actually refarm their 900 to 4G with a whole load of discontiguous 4G carriers, which is really not ideal considering that you now want big 4G carriers. So towards the end of December 2018, Vodafone and O2 applied for a partial trade of their spectrum in the 900 megahertz band so that they would end up with fewer blocks of discontiguous spectrum. Due to the complexity of doing this there is a transition period where both providers have joint control over certain blocks of the spectrum. Now this is quite complicated so I'm going to explain it with diagrams like in the rest of the video to make things a little bit easier. So we start off with the mess of spectrum as it was before, where each provider has their numerous discontiguous chunks of spectrum. During the transition period, the first three blocks in each direction stay the same, but then the next two blocks in each direction get allocated or get converted to have joint license by Vodafone and O2 and then the final block in each direction remains the same. And then after that we get the final migration, which is the end point of this spectrum trade. 
So the first two blocks in each direction remain the same, but then the rest is very much tidier. So Vodafone then possesses a big chunk in each direction, which is the next one. And then O2 owns the final large chunk in each direction. So if we look at this in terms of a before and after, the first two blocks remain the same. The third blocks get carried forward by Vodafone. The fourth blocks which were possessed by O2 then become controlled by Vodafone. The fifth blocks which were owned by Vodafone then become O2s. And the sixth blocks which were O2s continue to be O2s. Now the reason I make this video now is because of the Vodafone South 4G 900MHz trial deployment at Castle Carry, which uses EARFCN 3574 which replaces UARFCN 2987. Now, this is significant because that 3G and now 4G carrier is in a very good place for it widening beyond the 4G bandwidth that it is currently running at. So you'll see with the partial spectrum transfer in the transition phase that EARFCN 3574 is right next to the jointly owned block of spectrum. So then going forward, they could widen that carrier to 10 megahertz paired by spreading out into the transition period shared bandwidth. And then once the spectrum trade is complete, they could then operate the 10 megahertz paired 4G in their own dedicated now owned spectrum with a little GSM on the end of their second blocks. The same will likely apply for O2 as well, in that they could operate their 10 megahertz paired of 4G when they decide to refarm 900 megahertz from 3G to 4G and keep some 2G and a single 3G carrier at the same time. Thanks for watching this video about the 900 megahertz changes in the UK that are coming up. It will no doubt be an interesting few months with this going on alongside the 5G commercial enablements as well.